Hello, my hello, my <laughs> welcome to Hawaii. Hey, how's it? I want to grow up on the island of Oahu. This place called Kaimaki. Eh, stayed in one working class blue collar type neighborhood, yeah? On the ever side, on the west side of Diamond Head. On the other side of Diamond Head, stay Kahala. That's where all the rich Haoles, all the rich Caucasians go live over there. But us guys in Kaimaki, we know we get more class than the guys living in nearby Kapahulu or Palolo. <laughs> So to distinguish us from the other kind riffraff, we say we're living in Loa Kahala. <laughs> now, growing up in Loa Kahala, I had one friend named Keoki. Now, he was a Hawaiian kid, about a year older than me. Good fun. But from small kid time, he always would get me in trouble. In the beginning of one summer, my family and Keoki's family went camping on the other side of the island. Oh, this was one major expedition. I was about seven, Kyoki was about eight. Anyway, we go pack up the car and we go for this long drive to the other side of the island. Ho! Oh, was so long, me and Kyoki, we go fall asleep. Must have taken a whole 45 minutes for get there. Hey! No laugh. We stay on one island. Where are you gonna go on one island? You can drive around the whole island a couple hours, you know. That's going the long way around, yeah? You don't know how boring state driving really is, eh? Especially if you shot, you say stuck in the back seat and not can see nothing. Eh? Got really bad when my brother started farting. Oh, you know, the silent but deadly kind. Whoo, pee, lao. Terrible. And us kids, we don't can open up the window. Oh, it's like going gas chamber back there. Anyway, we finally get to the other side of the island and ho, oh, was gorgeous. You know, get white sand beach all to ourselves, little bit wave, enough to go have fun. Oh, man. However, this was one special family outing. Eh? Therefore, there had to be some educational content, as ordained by my mom. Yeah, we all saluted her, even dad. It was just easier that way. She say jump, we say how high. Dad say jump, we say okie dokie. That's how it was. Anyway. Near to where we're camping was one Heiau, an ancient Hawaiian temple. And for the educational part of our trip, mom go make an arrangement for us to go meet the kahu, the caretaker of the Heiau. The kahu was this huge Hawaiian man by the name of Mr. Kealoha. Oh, Mr. Kealoha, he was smart. He was akamai. He knew everything. He could tell us all about the plants we could see on the trail up to the Heiau. And he could tell us what the plant name was in English and what was in Hawaiian. And then he would tell us how the ancient Hawaiians would go use the plan. Wow. And he would even go tell us about the heiau, how it was laid out and constructed by hand, by just stacking the rocks. No more concrete, no more rebar, hole. And the heiaus, normally, this one was rectangular in shape, eh? surrounded by this lava stone wall. There was usually a gap or an entrance of one of the stone walls. Inside, you usually get like three-tiered stone platforms, yeah? Which is where a lot of the rituals would take place. And looking around, I can see, oh, the other walls stay straight. And the inner terrace stone, the platform stay even and flat. Wow. He would tell us that this Heiau was one war temple dedicated to the war god Ku. And was constructed with human sacrifices. Oh, oh that would give me chicken skin. Uh, you guys up here on the mainland, you guys call them goosebumps. But hey, in Hawaii, we call them chicken skin. Anyway, lesson pow, lesson over. Then we all go tank Mr. K. Aloha, and we all go hit the beach. Ho, we go play. We go play in the surf all day long. Dinner time come. Ho, wow, you can smell the barbecue. My dad get the hibachi going, the little little tiny grill. And then uh, go make fire, burn charcoal. And when the coal stay ready, you put on the meat. Marinated in teriyaki sauce on top of the grill. Oh, you can smell the meat cooking in your stomach because I get grumbling up with rice and salad and top it all off with one strawberry soda. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Telling you, that's living, man. Hey, broke the mouth so good. Winner. That means taste real good. Anyway, after dinner, we're going to make campfire on the beach. We're going to toast marshmallows. Well, 
Barbara and Kyoki got those marshmallows. I, I got kind of burnt a little bit. Came back kage, kind of black. Anyway, then we go make s'mores. We go make a mess. Mine never tastes so good, especially since I get a little bit of sand inside mine. Anyway, all the grown-ups go sit around the fire and talk story about all kind grown-up kind of stuff. And then my older brother, he go talk to Tioki's older sister about whatever's kind of stuff. Me and Kyoki, we get our flashlights. We go running around the beach looking for crabs. We stay down the beach and Kyoki say, Hey, we go hell. Are you crazy? It's the night time. I don't like go. Why? You chicken. I'm not chicken. I'm not scared. Chicken. Chicken. You're a chicken man. Chicken man. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, we go. We go. So we turn off our flashlights. We we'll make our way to the trail of the hay owl. We go put our hands over the front of a flashlight. We turn them so that nobody can see what we're doing. We go a little bit, because we know, you know, we're going to get dirty lickings we get caught. So we go like five feet, we turn on the flashlight, see where we stay, turn them off. Go another five feet, turn them on again, see where we're going. Go all that way, all the way up to the outer wall of the hay owl. Okay, okay, we're here. Now, now, time for go back to our parents. They're going to come looking for us. Nah says Kiyoki. We gotta go to the entrance. Come in over here and don't prove nothing. We gotta go to the entrance to the hell. Why? What for? Chicken, man. Shut up. Okay, we go. We go creeping up to the entrance. Oh, it's different coming up here at night time. Everything looks strange. The pukas in the lava rocks, the holes in the lava rocks look like they had eyes and was looking at us. Ho! Oh, all of a sudden, I had to go back room. I had to make number one real bad. We make them up to the entrance. We're standing there in the dark. I hop in from one foot to the other foot. Okay, okay, we're here, we're here. Okay, let's go back already. Nah. We got to go inside the hell. You nuts! That's sacred Hawaiian land. You Hawaiian. You're supposed to know that. What's the matter, you? Oh, cock, 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 cock. Shut up. Okay, okay, okay. We go. You first. Oh, now Kyoki, he's not shaking a little bit. Finally, he go take a step across the threshold into the hell. Oh, a cold night breeze suddenly spring out of nowhere. Oh, give me the heebie-jeebies. I almost wet myself right there. I go follow Kiyoki inside the hay owl. I figure, yeah, we take a couple steps inside, we turn around, we get out. But no! Kiyoki kept walking until he was in the middle of the hay owl. I went up to him and said, look all over the place for anything that wasn't supposed to be there. I go, hey, hey, anything look weird? I almost made number two in my pants right there. Okay, 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 we here, we here. You happy, you happy. Now let's go. Nah. We gotta, gotta go get something to prove he was here. Otherwise, my sisters and your brother never gonna believe us. I was thinking that my sold underwear would probably be pretty good proof. What you gonna get over here? One rock, one leaf, dirt, what? Gotta be something else. Kyoki would say, looking around the ground with his flashlight. Then he would reach down, brush away some dirt, and he grabbed a hold of something and pulled out one bone. Wasn't one chicken bone either. Was smooth and curved. And in the flashlight beam, I could see the lines where a couple bones went, go get fused together. Ho! Oh, only get one bone in the human body that looked like that. What? What you gonna do? It's on part of a human skull! I, 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 sorry, I, sorry, I, I thought it was on stick! I almost made number one and number two in my pants right then. Oh, what are we gonna do? Kyoki was panicking too. And then we look around at me, he look all around, and that's when we spotted the light on the trail coming up the hill. Ah! Night marches! Now, night marches. See, in Hawaii, Certain holy nights of the Hawaiian calendar, the dead march along prescribed trails. They usually go from Mauka to Makai, from the mountains to the sea. 
and they let you know they, they're coming for them. They like you get out of the way. Sometimes you can see them in a line of torchlights coming down the mountain. Sometimes you can hear the pahu drums, the chanting. Sometimes get real hot where you're standing. And about five feet away, you can see the wind blowing in the grass. That's the night marchers telling you they're coming for you to get out of the way. They find you on the path. They go come take you with them to the other world. And that's it for you. Bye-bye, pow, finish. Because you go make. You dead. <laughs> night marchers. I see the light coming up the trail. Oh, hey, hey, we got to get out of here. Too late. That's the only path down. <laughs> take off your shirt. I look at Kiyoki. He's panicking. He's scared. Oh, I get scared too, so I take off my shirt. The lights are getting closer. All of a sudden, <gasps> I never have to go to the bathroom at all. Take off your pants. What? You like make? You like die? Take off your pants. That's the only way the night marchers could leave us alone, is if we act like an idiot. Now, the notion is that if you act like an idiot, the night marchers might take pity on you. They think maybe, eh, you're not worth the trouble to take to the other side. So Kyoki say, hey, hey, we, we gotta act like idiots. Hey, I think I get that one covered. What you mean? I in this hair out in the middle of the night with you. I must be one idiot. That's when we heard the crunch, crunch, crunch of feet upon the gravel of the path getting closer. I took off my pants. Now, now, take off your underpants. Hey. I'm not taking my underpants off for nobody. You gotta take off all your clothes. You gotta pee in yourself. Act like an idiot, like one stupid idiot. Then maybe the night marchers leave us alone. A few minutes ago, I was all set for wet myself. I was so scared. But now, I bet I could fart dust. I just stood there. Uh, never mind, too late, too late. We could see the light was now at the entrance of the hell. Get on your knees in the dirt and grovel. Say you sorry. Oh, Kyoki, he was crying. So I crying too. I got down on my knees and started saying I was sorry. We heard the crunch, crunch, crunch of the footsteps and the light getting closer and closer. And here we were, these two kids in our underwear, too scared to pee, crying in the dirt in one ancient Hawaiian temple at night, saying we're sorry for being there and praying that we're not going to die. The footsteps stopped right in front of us. The light shone all around us. Kyoki stayed groveling, saying, How sorry you for being there, me. I wouldn't go look up. Little bit. I'd go see this pair of rubber slippers. And his huge taro patch kind feet, big and wide. They stay stuck on the ends of these two big legs. Keep looking up a little bit more. I see then these surfer shorts and then this t-shirt that says Primo Beer. And then I go look into the face of Mr. Ke Aloha, the Kahu. Hey, what you boys doing over here? Nothing. How come you boys stay half naked? Yeah, what's Kyoki's idea? He said we're going to take off our clothes and act like idiots else the night marcher's going to take us away. We thought you was one night marcher. Night marcher? Huh. <laughs> hey, okay, boys. Hey, hey, put your clothes back on. I take you back to your parents. We're all so sorry. We're going to disturb the Hawaiian bones. What? Lolo Kyoki over here go dig up a one of a part of a human skull. We go show him the bone. The kahu, he look at him real close under his flashlight. Eh, hey, uh, no worry, boys. This not part of one human skull. This part of one sea turtle shell. Ancient Hawaiians go use them like spoon, huh? Eh, hey, no worry. I don't think you boys gonna die tonight. Well, kind of depends upon your parents, eh? We went back down to the camp. And Mr. Kealoa told our parents what we was up to. Oh, my dad, he laughed so hard he fell out of his chair. Kyoki's parents and my mom laughed so hard they started to cry. 
My brother, he laughed so hard that he farted. I mean, everybody laughed all over again. Ah, it might have been pretty funny, huh? Expect, except that every weekend for the rest of the summer, our parents would take turns driving us to the other side of the island to stay with Mr. Ke Aloha. We go spend the weekend with him, pulling weeds, watering the plants, raking leaves, and listening to his stories. Wasn't the last time Kyoki and me would get in trouble, but it was one of the best summers we ever had.